If you're thinking of buying a new or used graphics card and not sure what to go for, you can check out my best GPU picks at every single price point video right up here. And in today's video, we are revisiting the RTX 2070 from 2018. This is the MSI Gaming Z model, which I used in my main rig for a few months before switching to Radeon. By the way, if you're interested, you can learn about my experience with AMD GPUs up here. And since I recently upgraded to a Ryzen 5 5600 from A2700X, I thought it would be a good idea to retest this card since the second gen Ryzen 7 was slightly bottlenecking it in certain games. The RTX 2070 has 8GB of GDDR5 memory with a 256-bit memory bus and 2304 shading units. You can currently find one of these used for right under $200, though keep in mind that for just a little more you can get yourself a 2070 Super or, if you're lucky, a 3060 12GB. Even better, at around $140, there is the 5700 XT, which is cheaper and better compared to the cards that I just mentioned. So unless you prefer Team Green, the 5700 XT is definitely the way to go. Speaking of the 5700 XT, I recently ordered one of these and we will be checking it out in one of my future videos, so make sure to subscribe if you're interested. Anyways, for the specs we have a Ryzen 5 5600, a B350 PC Mate motherboard, 32GB of 3200MB transfer memory, and a 700W power supply. The most recent driver version was used at the time of testing, which is 536.99. The power as well as the temperature limits have been increased to maximum in MSI Afterburner, and the power plan's been set to best performance. Alright, starting off, let's have a look at some good results. First up, we have Apex Legends, and using high settings, the game is very playable. There are instances where the frame rate can drop down to 80s, which is noticeable and can be a problem since this is a multiplayer title, though that can easily be fixed by lowering a few settings. Spider-Man Remastered runs really well on the RTX 2070 using the highest preset. There is some movement in the frame time which can be noticeable at times, though overall the game is very playable and the frame rate rarely drops below 80s. Battlefield 2042 also runs perfectly fine, although here I wouldn't go beyond the medium preset since the increase in frame rate is over 30% compared to high. The RTX 2070 has no issues running Forza Horizon 5 using ultra settings either. Once again, the frame rate rarely drops below 80s. By the way, I haven't tested this card with ray tracing enabled because, as we saw previously, it isn't very good at it in games like Dying Light 2 and Cyberpunk, so I didn't see a point in it. But you should be able to enable it in some titles, such as Spider-Man, because we're already getting a pretty high frame rate there. You just might need to reduce other settings or use upscaling to compensate. Far Cry 6 is perfectly playable as well, using the high preset we're able to stay above 90 frames most of the time. Keep moving, Lita. We're almost there. Thank you. 
Dying Light 2 doesn't run too bad using the high preset, though I would still lower a few settings or enable upscaling since this game has absolutely terrible input lag, which becomes even more noticeable at lower frame rates. Performance in Cyberpunk is good. Using the high preset, the game mostly hovers between 60 to 75 FPS. Finally, we have Warzone 2, which runs fine, though as we saw previously, this game doesn't like Nvidia GPUs, so you do need to stick to the lowest settings if you want to have no stuttering and stay above 90 frames with this card. Keep in mind that the game was also tested on a smaller map since the big one wasn't available at the time, so performance there will most likely be slightly worse. Looking at temps, the GPU does a pretty good job at keeping itself cool in a 28 degrees Celsius room, while also not being very audible. Power-wise, the total system power consumption doesn't exceed 350 watts at 1440p in Cyberpunk, meaning you want to have at least a 550 watt unit to power this build. The 2070 had a rough start when it came out. Not only there weren't a lot of games that had ray tracing, the PC community just wasn't having it due to the meh price to performance ratio. The GTX 1070, which by the way we recently had a look at, was a much more successful graphics card and had a significantly bigger performance jump over its predecessor without as big of a price increase. Going for the GTX 1080 instead also made more sense since it was quite a bit cheaper and performed similarly without RT, which made the RTX 2070 at $500 a bad purchase decision. The release of the 2070 Super a year later though wasn't as rough as performance was noticeably improved while retaining the same $500 price point. Like I mentioned in the beginning, make sure to check prices of the Super variant as well as the RTX 3060 12GB because you can find them for not that much more on the used market. Either way, that's been it. Feel free to have a look around the channel and stay tuned for the RX 5700 XT, 6600 XT and the 6800 revisits which I'll be uploading in the near future. Anyways, thank y'all for watching, be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more content, and I'll see y'all in the next one.